Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover few more Verilog SDL system tasks and functions. So basically, this is going to be part 2 of our module 16 of Verilog SDL crash course. So let's get started. So first of all, we are going to cover dollar random system task. So dollar random generates a random integer every time it is called. If the sequence is to be repeatable, that means it will want to repeat the sequence again. The first time one invokes random, give it a numerical argument. So basically the meaning of this statement is, if we want to repeat the sequence which we got with our previous dollar random system task, we have to basically give a seed value to the dollar random system task when calling it. That means if we are calling the dollar random system task with a seed value, we can repeat the same sequence from that dollar random system task multiple times. If we don't give the seed to the dollar random system task, it is basically derived from the computer clock. I will explain you in more details what is the advantage of using a seed value with a dollar random system task in few minutes. So let's first see the syntax. So the syntax of dollar random system task is we have to basically call this dollar random system task with some variable. So basically this variable is going to get the random value. So this is the one way of calling the dollar random system task without any seed value. Now let's see the second method. So in the second method, we are calling the dollar random system task with an integer seed value. And that random value which is generated out of this dollar random system task will be assigned to x, y, z, g and y. And the third way of calling the dollar random system task is when basically we want to limit the output of dollar random system task, we can call it like this dollar random and modulus integer. So basically here the total value from this expression is basically limited by this integer value. How? Let's assume that this integer value is 5. That means whenever we are calling this dollar random system task with modulus 5, the output of this expression is always going to be between 0 and 4. So basically here we are limiting the random value range. Now let's see some examples. So here we are declaring a variable, 4 bit variable, register type and we are calling this dollar random system task with the seed value 7. So whatever the random value generated will be basically assigned to XYZ which is 4 bit register type variable. And here this is the second way of calling where forever we are calling this dollar random system task at an interval of 20 units. So at every 20 units, we are calling this dollar random system task, which is basically generating some random values which are not based on any seed variable. But the seed variable here is basically going to be derived from the system clock. And if you see here, the variable here xyz is just a 4 bit variable. So the 4 LSB bits of the random integers will basically transfer into the xyz. Thus xyz will be a random integer between 0 to 15 only. So if the random variable which is generated out of this dollar random system task is more than 15, for example, 16, 17, 18, now 19, which is basically in binary will be 5 bit. But our variable which is going to store these values is just a 4 bit variable. So the last bit will be omitted here. So the range of our variable xyz is going to be between 0 and 15. Now let's understand what is the importance of seed. So let's assume that we have a test case and when we ran that test case, there are basically some issues during the simulation. So if we run that test case with a particular seed value, then what we can do is we can debug that test. What is the issue? Then we can fix few things in our design and then we would like to run that test case again with the same stimuli so that we can verify if the fix which we have done is going to be 
result or not so in that particular case if we do not run our test case with the particular seed value then during the second simulations our seed value might be a different and it will not generate the same stimuli as previous so for the debugging purpose during the simulations it is very important to run a particular test case with a seed value so that we can run that particular test, test case multiple times with the same stimuli after fixing any of the issues which are there in that particular simulation now let's see the further few of the dozer system tasks so here we have few system tasks which are dump file dump variable dump on dump off and dump all so these system tasks are basically associated with the dumping some variable values during the simulation and the dump files are capable of dumping all the variables in the simulation the important thing to remember here is this is a convenient method for debugging because here we can see all the variable values during the simulation how they are changing but it will make our simulations very very slow so first time when we basically want to debug few things we can use all of these system tasks and we can debug easily but as our simulation is basically stable we can remove all of these system tasks and our simulation run will be faster so now let's understand each and every system task here how what is basically the purpose of these system tasks so the dump file is basically creates a dump file where we can dump the variables from our design so dump file file name dot dmp so basically here the dump file dot dmp will get created by using this system task now dump variables dump variables basically will dump all the variables in the design if we are just using the dump dump var it will dump all the variables present in our design into file name dot dmp now if we are using dump variable with some arguments so first is argument here we are passing one and then we are giving two so it will basically dump all the variables in the module top so in the top level module whatever all variables are present those will be dumped into this file name dot dmp now if we are calling dump variable with first argument two and then two so it will dump all the variables in the module top and one level below so in the top module we have instantiated multiple sub modules then in those sub modules there may be another sub sub modules so the dump variable with argument 2 will basically dump all the variables present in the top module plus one level below now dump variable with first argument n and top it will dump all the variables in the module top and n minus levels below now dump variable if we pass the argument first argument as 0 it will dump all the variables in the top module and at all the levels dump on basically initiates the dump procedure and dump off will stop the dumping procedure now let's see one example so here we have a module test bench and we have some few register type variables and wire variables and then here first we are basically going to create a file which is basically cwave underscore data dot dump file and here we are just calling dump variable without any arguments that means it is going to dump all the variables per in the design now if we are calling dump variable with first argument 1 and 2 so dump variable with argument 1 will basically dump all the variable in module 2 and here we are calling dump on that means dump dumping procedure will start so this is just i have put how we can make use of these system tasks to dump the variables now let's see another few system tasks which are dozer f open dozer f display dozer f stroke dozer f monitor and dozer f write so these basically system task writes more selectively to a file so f open basically opens an output file and gives the open file a handle to use by the other commands so we will see how it will return a handle and it will create say output file now the f close basically closes the file and lets other programs access it the dozref display and dozref write writes formatted data to a file whenever they are executed this is very important whenever they are executed they are the same except dozref display inserts a new line after every execution and dozref write does not so whenever we call the dozref display it displays or basically writes the data into the file in a new line but dozer 
write basically do the ref write do the ref write basically will write the data continuously and do the stroke also writes to a file when executed but it waits until all the operations in the time stamp are completed before writing let's see one example here so here we have an initial block and here we have after one unit assign a equal to one so the meaning of this is after one unit assign a equal to one and immediately assign b equal to zero now we are pulling f strove handle one let's assume that we have a file open and it has the associated handle as as and one and here we are giving the argument a and b and then b equal to one so we are pulling here f strove and the value of b is updated here so how it is going to print the do the ref stroke will print one one for a and b both so we can understand easily here that a a's value is yes definitely is one before we call the do the ref stroke but the value of b is zero before we call the do the ref stroke but the do the ref stroke writes the data into the file at the end of the current time stamp so basically it waits until all other operations in the current time stamp are completed and do the monitor do the f monitor also writes to a file whenever any one of its arguments changes so i hope these commands are very much clear now let's see the syntax so when we use the do the ref commands first basically we have to create one output file so here using the do the ref opens we are basically creating a output file and its name is file name one dot suffix and when we call this this command it basically results one handle handle one so now the other commands like f strove f display f write can use this handle one so if we use this handle one then basically the data will be written to this file name one here we we can open one another file file name two and this will results one another handle so by using the dodra f strove we have to pass the handle one and then the format in which format we want the data to be written like binary hexadecimal decimal and then the variable list like that we can write into the file name two also using the handle associated with it which is nothing but handle two and then the format of the data and the variable list and then we can write the f write we can we can write the data into the handle two that means it is the file name two and the format and the variables which we want to write in that particular file so friends i hope the very log system task and functions covered in this particular video and the use cases are very much clear to you if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like this video please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as i upload the next video thank you very much